Hi friends, we are here today to talk about burnout in early career occupational therapists and what we can do about it. Make sure you stick around to the end because I tell you the most important step in managing burnout. I'm Michelle Newby and I'm from Stepping Up. Hi guys, we are here today to talk about the hot topic of burnout in pediatric occupational therapists. Now I speak to so many early career occupational therapists, particularly those working in the NDIS space, who are just feeling quite burnt out by the workload. And this is a problem that we need to solve. So I've got four top tips for you today to help avoid burnout. So my first tip is to think about work-life balance. Now, we, we, we all know about work-life balance and we talk about occupational balance with the clients that we work with. But as OTs, we're often not that good at following our own advice. But I'm here today to tell you that it's really important to avoid burnout and to make sure that you have adequate time for work, rest and play. So within the workspace, are you making sure that your workload is sustainable? Are you taking work home? Are you doing your reports and progress notes after hours? If you are, you need to stop that. That's, that's not good. It's not good for your mental health and your well-being. So have a little think about whether you're needing to take work home and whether work is kind of encroaching into your sort of playtime, your leisure time. Um, so thinking about rest, are you getting enough sleep? And if you're not getting enough sleep, then what can you do about that? Think about your sleep hygiene. Think about whether you need to go chat with your doctor about that. Um, and also thinking about sort of rest and relaxation. Are you including mindful moments into your day? Do you, what do you do to relax? Um, and so thinking about building some relaxation um, and, and downtime into, into your schedule. Also thinking about play, play and leisure. So play is not just for kids, you know, play is for everyone and it's really where we de-stress. So thinking about how are you, you know, amping up the play or the leisure in your schedule? Are you kind of, you know, playing social sport or, you know, are you catching up with friends and having a good laugh? Like, what are you doing to make sure that you've got enough play in your life? So that's the first top tip. The second top tip is to think about your caseload. So too often in the NDIS space, I hear about early career OTs just being piled on with clients, like really unmanageable, huge caseloads. And I've got a problem with this because it impacts the well-being of the therapist because you don't actually feel like you're doing a good job, um, but it also impacts the quality of the care that our clients is, uh, are receiving. And, and I, I don't like that, that's not okay. So do a bit of an audit of your caseload and think about, you know, are there too many demands placed on me during my contracted work hours? And if there are, then you need to be having a conversation with your employer about that. The third top tip for avoiding burnout is doing a self check. So checking in with yourself around a few key areas. So the first key area to check in with is around your values. So what are your personal values? Have you thought about that? And if you haven't, then Brene Brown, the amazing Brene Brown, has got a really good values clarification activity and checklist. If you just Google Brene Brown values clarification, um, it will come up. So check what your values are. What are they? Because our values drive our behavior. And what you want to make sure is that your values are in alignment with the values of your workplace. Because if they're not, then there's always actually going to be a tension uh, between you and, and you, the work that you're doing in that place. You really want to make sure that your values are well aligned in your workplace. So the next part of the self-check that you, you need to be thinking about is the skills. So do you actually have the skills to perform the job that you're being asked to do? 
too many times I have been told about new grad occupational therapists, you know, coming out of uni, they've got lots of really beautiful generalist skills, which is what you get from your OT degree, and they're just thrown in the deep end with complex clients, but they're not given the training or the education or the skills that they need to really provide a quality service to those clients. So when you don't have the necessary skills to, de to deliver you know, a good quality service, you, it doesn't feel good. Like it actually doesn't feel good um, when, you, when you don't ha have the skills. So if your workplace is not providing you with training and education opportunities, then that's actually a big problem as well. You need to think about that. So the third area of doing a self-check is thinking about perfectionism. Oh. Now, this is huge. So perfectionism, is rife in occupational therapy. We're very high achievers as, as OTs, and we, we, you know, we really need to check that because perfectionism kind of can constrain you and it can cause you to feel quite dissatisfied in the work that you do. Here at Stepping Stones, we have a motto that we don't do perfectionism, we do excellence. One of our core values is excellence always. And if you think about it, perfectionism doesn't allow space for mistakes, does it? Um, so if you're just striving for excellence, then it allows space for making mistakes and for growing and for learning and for developing. Whereas perfectionism, you know, it's it never feels good. Even when you've finished the task, if you're doing it in a perfectionistic way, it's never good enough. It's never actually good enough. So just check your perfectionism and you know, see if you need to kind of leave that at the door. <laughs> So that's what you need to do when you're doing a self-check. So my fourth top tip, and the most important one I think, is that when you're starting to identify these signs of burnout, you need to seek support. So when you're seeking support, what you need to do is you need to let your supervisor know or let your employer know how you're feeling. Um, and most employers will have an EAP support system. So that is an employee assistance program. So that is where you can go and access a counsellor who is trained to support you to, to manage your stress and to look at the factors that are contributing to burnout. So don't be afraid to put your hand up and say, hey guys, I'm struggling a bit here and I'd like some help. So definitely seek support. So the key is to spot the signs of burnout early and then take action to make sure that you nip that in the bud and get the support that you need. So I hope you've liked this video. Make sure that you share it with your friends, click like and subscribe and add a comment because we'd love to hear what, you, what your thoughts are about what we're doing here at Stepping Up. Thank you, bye-bye.